You're looking at a man that can be running back one overall in 2024. And a lot of people are going to say, what about this guy? What about that guy? I thought you loved Bijan. I thought you loved Brees Hall. I love all those guys. And to be quite honest with you, we'll be coming back with a, is Brees Hall the number one overall running back? Is Bijan the number one overall running back? Is Jameer Gibbs the number one overall running back? Does CMC deserve to be one no matter what? We're going to go over all of those players, but we're here to really talk about how this guy was on pace. If you extrapolate his 12-game uh, production, because he played 12 games, that's all. He only played 12 games, which is one of the knocks on him. People say that he's going to he's gonna get hurt. He won't stay healthy. He's too small. This guy's training like a monster right now. This guy is out for blood in 2024. And everybody that says they're going to bring in another running back, I assure you, the people I talk to very close to this situation say this man's on a mission to be RB1. He's on a mission to prove people wrong. McVay loves him like no other running back he's had in quite some time. And he's all in on Kyron. And Kyron's training like a monster. We're talking about Kyron Williams. We're not saying Bijan's not running back one. We're not saying Brees Hall can't be running back one. Or Gibbs can't be running back one. But we sure as hell cannot say this man has even a, a, a no shot, small chance, whatever, of being running back one. Because he absolutely can be the fantasy football show. Kyron Williams show begins right now. Live from the FantasyFootballShow.com studios. It's the Fantasy Football Show. Live! Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern. Smitty is also live whenever news breaks. I'm live whenever news breaks. I'm live uh, Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern, every single Monday through Friday. And tonight is a very special show because we're... We're, I don't want to say getting away from breaking news and, and uh, free agency news and all that because we love that. We love this time of year. I, I can't think of another time of year I like more. But I do like getting back to some of the meat and potatoes of what the channel is about. Aside from that, breaking news and such is to talk about players that are on the rise. Talk about players that are already, they've already risen, but will they continue to play well? And I'm, I'm telling you right now. That if anybody thinks that this guy can't be running back one overall, again, this is not to say Bijan's not going to end up being my ultimate number one running back prediction. I'll come out with all that later. This is a top three running back right here. Top four minimum. Like, if he's got to bump out one of the other guys, so be it. But he's going to be inside one of my top four running back locked in predictions by the time we get all this thing this thing going and, and cooking. Right now, we're doing a little bit of projection, prediction. It's really close. Like Brees Hall, Bijan, Gibbs, Kyron, Christian McCaffrey. It is like neck and neck. It's like these guys are one moment this this far ahead of the other. The next minute I got another guy popping in. Next minute it's Bijan. It's always Bijan. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and say I'm not wavering the entire time. The top five is lit. Even Christian McCaffrey, but he's 28 years old, so there's some concern there. But Kyron Williams brought the thunder in 2024. He came down... Out of, uh, you could say, nowhere, even though I love this guy entering his rookie year, but he got injured. And so walking into last season, I didn't even know what to make of him hitting week one. And he came out on a terror. This guy came out on a mission. And when we look at his stats for 2023, the guy had 12 games played, 1144, five yards a carry, six 100-yard games on 12 games. Half of his games were 100-yard rushing games. 12 touchdowns on 12 games. That's one rushing TD per game. Targets 48, 32 receptions, 206. Some of you might say, hey, this is uh, this is Zach Robinson's offense, right? Zach Robinson's passing attack. I hope we get more receptions out of Bijan than 32. Don't worry, we will. Bijan's a, a receiver in some respects. He's one of the best receiving uh, one of the best receivers coming out of his draft class if you lump in all the wide receivers and running backs together. He's special. He's different. Zach Robinson is going to have a lot dialed up for Bijan over in Atlanta. But this is unbelievable. He had 15 touchdowns in 12 games. I don't know if people understand the pace. If we pace this out, extrapolate this over across 17 games, which is sometimes a risky business to do. But not when you have a 12-game sample. This is not like saying, oh, the guy played four games. If you extrapolate that out across 17 games, he'd have an amazing season. He had 12 games. 
12 games, 12 monster games, 228 rushing attempts. If you extrapolate this data out, he would have rushed for 16, 1,620 rushing yards instead of 1,144. He would have ran and and received a, a sum total of 21 touchdowns had he played 17 games. 45 receptions for 291 yards. Again, probably his, his, his not so, you know, amazing totals would be the receiving department, but that's still a good receiving number, especially when you consider he had three receiving touchdowns. And that would have put him at running back number two and put him about 30 points behind Christian McCaffrey. Him and McCaffrey would have been above everybody, soaring above everybody. This guy was 30 po- around 30 exact points away from Christian McCaffrey. One game away from Christian McCaffrey had he played 17 games, if you extrapolate the data. This is an absolute monster. 12 rushing TDs, 3 receiving, 15 total in 12 games. 20, this is a 20 touchdown capable running back you're looking at right here. That's what makes him the most dangerous running back in all of fantasy football. Not to mention he sometimes falls in the territory of like 7 to 12 overall. I've gotten this guy at bookend 12, 13 picks on an underdog fantasy promo code. Smitty, will they'll, they'll double your first deposit up to $100. So please click that link. I'm going to drop the link in the live chat right now. And maybe we'll jump into a draft at the tail end of this uh, stream. So why don't you click this uh, link right now. I'm going to pin the link in the live chat. They'll double the first deposit that you put in there up to $100. So uh, hit it, do it live, hit the link. Appreciate you all being in here. Kyron Williams, is he running back one overall in 2024? I'm making a damn good case for it, I might say. Because anybody that thinks this guy didn't do enough last year to prove it, if injury is your only concern, then you have a concern you can lay out there and avoid him on if you want. You could say, I'm not going near Kyron because I don't think he'll stay healthy. Kind of a ridiculous claim if you ask me because this guy went out there and was a force. He's amazing between the tackles. They use him like a, 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 a an every down back over in LA LAR. They're not they're not dialing that back. Sean McVay. I keep hearing everybody saying Sean McVay is going to bring in competition. Why would you bring in competition for a running back that that got you 15 touchdowns last year? Why would you try and replace somebody that's, that's on a mission that in the offseason dragging sleds 100 yards down the field doing sprints, running 100-yard sprints with a sled attached to his back? He's out there training like a maniac. I'm going to put some of the, the uh, footage on my Instagram. Make sure you're following me on IG. So much content on IG. I went from the last time I screenshotted this, 16.2K followers. We're at 20, almost 25,000 followers on Instagram. Uh, we actually passed the YouTube numbers. We're at 24 point five ish I think on here on YouTube the Instagram uh, channel account is at 24.6k we're climbing there's so much great content especially if you click on my face the stories uh, the story posts are probably the best I think around um, th- this guy Kyron Williams is gonna put footage on my Instagram of this guy working out and he is on such a mission this year to get bigger better stronger faster uh, he wants to play a full season. He wants to prove he can play a full season. He's going to have, in my opinion, the, the 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 easiest capability to get to 20-plus touchdowns or 18-plus touchdowns total in 2024. He's the I think he's the touchdown-leading running back no matter what happens. If, if Bijan outscores him, if Bijan could have more touchdowns, but it, it's certainly possible. But if Bijan outscores him, it's because of the PPR um, work that he brings to the table, and, and Bijan could be running back one. He, I'm going to do a video on that. I'm going to do a video on that. Be prepared. Don't say Smitty. I thought Kyron was your number one. I'm telling you all the different angles here, and, and the truth of the matter is, if I'm drafting at number three overall in four drafts, or even if you say five, side by side by side, I'm taking Kyron in one. I'm taking Bijan in the other. I'm taking Brees Hall in the other. I'm taking Gibbs in the other. I'm taking CMC in the other. That's just to let you know how close this neck and neck race is. It's a photo finish. But if I have to predict predict right now, and I might even put it on the board, Kyron Williams leads the NFL in rushing touchdowns. Ky- or even total touchdowns for RBs. Kyron Williams leads all running backs, including Christian McCaffrey, everybody. He leads everybody in total touchdowns for a running back. And I'll write it on the board tonight. 
21 TDs was his pace. He's on a mission. I tell you, this offseason, he's dragging sleds. He's trying to prove his power, his aggressiveness. This is Pacheco on steroids. This is how good Kyron Williams is going to be in 2024. I can feel it. And if I had to project numbers, I'd say 1,400 rushing yards at least. I would say twelve. give him 12 rushing touchdowns again. Give him 50. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, give him four. Give me, give, give me fifteen hundred rushing yards. Give me fourteen. Give me fifteen rushing touchdowns. I'm gonna go fifteen and fifteen. Fifteen hundred rushing yards. Fifteen touchdowns. Forty receptions. Maybe 35, 40 receptions. Two fifty, three hundred receiving, and and the additional four touchdowns that puts him at like 19, 20 touchdowns in twenty twenty four. That's what I have for Kyron. Kyron is a monster. Kyron is a steal. Kyron is going at the 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 big range. People are kind of all over the map on him. His ADP is reasonable. And if I pull up Underdog Fantasy, again, promo code SMITTY, that link is pinned in the live chat. We might do a draft here at the end. So if you want to get in uh, on a draft with me, please hit that link right now and prepare. Don't don't try and sign up in the last, the, the last second. You're not going to get in. Um, so Underdog Fantasy code SMITTY. They'll double your first deposit, but the link works the best. The link's in the description of the video if you end up watching the replay of this. Uh, but the link's pinned in the live chat. So, the ADP of Kyron Williams. <laughs> Good God. Unbelievable. I lied to you all. I'm sorry. I, I didn't realize I was lying to you when I lied to you, but I lied to you all. His ADP is even more reasonable than I thought. We are going to absolutely crush our opponents in 2024 with with this information. Um, let me let me see if I can send this to myself real quickly and put it on screen. Uh, here here's the ADP data from Underdog Fantasy. I, I I can't believe he's dropping. I can't believe it's getting even better. And Barkley might surpass him. <laughs> you know the way this is going. Look at this. You're looking down this list uh, right here. Let me let me put uh, let me see if I can put a, a like a line under here so you guys can see it. Kyron Williams, thirteen point four. Running back, what is it five? Running back five, thirteen point four overall. Kyron Williams is a second round pick. He's going at the 12-13 turn. Garrett Wilson, Kyron Williams. Jameer Gibbs, Kyron Williams. Puka and Kyron, you get lucky to get that combination, but you could get that combination. St. Brown, same thing. Kind of lucky once in a while. A.J. Brown, Kyron, you can get that. But Kyron and Gibbs is probably my favorite bookend picks. My favorite bookend picks at 12-13 is Gibbs and Kyron. And I'll go later wide receiver shopping. I'll get Debo's. I'll get, um, you know, players like that and then grab a quarterback, Hurts or Mahomes or something like that. I'm, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with going with one wide receiver, Devontae Smith and, and a potential Cooper Cup. And you go a little bit a little bit riskier at wide receiver too with Cooper Cup. That That's a phenomenal start. Kyron, Gibbs, Devontae Smith, Cooper Cup, Joe Burrow, this this is this is win a league material right here. There's really no other than Mahomes in the fourth round. There's probably no better pick in the National Football League and fantasy football. There's no better pick than Kyron Williams at the bookend pick territory at twelve thirteen. It's gonna win leagues. It's gonna win leagues and it's gonna win leagues in in ways we haven't seen in some time. And I'm here to beat the drum. And I don't want to change it, but I do. I want to change it because the more I promote it, the more people that take advantage of it, the more people that win with this information, the more I'm doing my job. And uh, I, I realize a lot of you are like, Smitty, don't don't keep stop beating the drum and making this into a, a big loud scene. We we want to make sure we continue to to annihilate people with this Kyron Williams at 13.4, but it's my job. It's unbelievable. It's Smitty Approved. You've just been Smitty Approved. 
dial in. Don't forget all this news. There's a show we just did a couple hours ago. But I would love for you guys to call in on this one. There's there's no argument against this. I, I, if anybody's got an argument against Kyron Williams at, at freaking 13 overall, I'm very, I'm very eager to hear you call in and try and argue this because you've, you're going to have zero, zero ability to convince me that Kyron Williams isn't an absolute smash at 12-13. Um, <laughs> that ADP is phenomenal. It's phenomenal. And we'll probably get into a draft here in a second, so I'll drop the link. Uh, actually, you know what? Let me plug in here. And we'll put the uh, we'll put the the draft on the screen. We're gonna jump into a draft. So everybody, click that link. Underdog Fantasy promo code Smitty. The links in the live chat. Code Smitty gets it done as well. Space Ricky dropping a super chat right now. It says get it here live. Delayed six uh, seconds to the moon. Appreciate you, Space Ricky. Thank you for dropping the super chat, my guy. You are the man, the myth, the legend. Let me see if I can get my screen to share here. And we'll jump into a draft and we'll open the phone lines and talk to everybody here. Let's see if I can get my, with my luck, my my uh, phone's going to have a problem here. Is it not going to let me do it? Uh, Travis, what's up? You live? You're hey, live. What's going on? There you are. Yep. What's up? Um, I agree with you, um, on Tyron. I think, uh, I think if all the guys are healthy, he might not be the number one, but he definitely can be. Um, and to anyone who I've heard some doubt too, this is one of Sean McVay's guys. He really likes him. Like, like you said, going into not this past year, but the year before they, like there was big, I don't, <clears throat> I wasn't watching your show at the time. But there was big, like, breaking news right before opening night. Tyron Williams is going to be getting carries either as much or over Cam Akers. And everyone was, like, going crazy over it. And that's how much Sean McVay liked him, is that he was already looking to push him above Akers on the depth chart two years ago. So this this is definitely the face guy. Yeah, no, it's and, – and, I, and I, I, know, I know what you're saying, and I don't blame you for saying what you're saying, but – I don't, I don't care who else is healthy. I Kyron Williams on if he's healthy, he's he would have scored right. 20 plus touchdowns. So like I I have no I don't care it doesn't matter what everybody else is doing. If Kyron's healthy, he's a top 1 to 2 minimum 3 guy and I think that I I'm going to put it on the board here that he 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 has more touchdowns, total touchdowns than any other running back in the National Football League this year. I'm going to put that up on the board uh, behind me. But you know, I get that some people will be skeptical of it. I don't know what it is that makes people skeptical. The, not not saying you are. You, you're, you're very in favor of them. But the people that are, like, very skeptical of it, I don't get I don't get what it is. I think it's part of that thing is the same Cooper Cup syndrome where it's like if they didn't see it coming and they missed out on getting him, let's say, especially in, like, Dynasty Leagues or they're still bitter about whatever and you just ignored it and you didn't take advantage of it and somebody else did – and it burned you so bad, you're rooting against it so you don't feel wrong. You don't want to be the guy that didn't see it coming. It's the nature of, of you know, being a, a fantasy football, you know, owner and and, and going through the the ups and downs of a season and, and everybody just saying, I don't, I don't want to be wrong. If, if he ends up failing, then I ultimately am not that, I didn't miss it. I didn't really miss it, did I? You know, I don't know what it is about people not being able to, to just adjust and adapt and say, look, this guy, when he's on the field, looks better than anybody. He looks as productive as Christian McCaffrey all last year when he's on the field. Like, when he's on the field, you're getting Christian McCaffrey numbers. They were they were within 30 points of each other if you pace it out. So there's no player in the National Football League I have more confidence in that's it, if it's in the game to give me 100 in touch. 100 total yards and a touchdown every single game, I'm, ba I'm banking on Kyron. Because Kyron scored 12 Whoa. rushing touchdowns in 12 games last year. He had 15 touchdowns in 12 games last year. There's no better bet in the National Football League for a touchdown and 100 total yards than Kyron Williams. There's just no better bet, in my opinion. 
and they should that they're they're willing to use them all over the field. And um, to anyone who says, oh, they're going to bring someone in or draft someone, that's fine because you want a solid backup behind them and someone, you know, that can give them a breather once in a while. But yeah, I, I highly doubt any any rookie is going to be taking his job. Like, what what would be the <laughs> yeah, point of that? So, first of all, someone would have to come in and be better than, better than him. Yeah, for, first of all, there's no free agent running backs left no. that are threats at all. Second of all, on top of that, there's no rookies. This is a very weak rookie class. There's no rookie that's taking them out. None. I don't care if it's Jalen Wright. I don't care if it's uh, Braylon Allen. I don't care if they draft both of them. Mm -hmm. Nobody's unseating Kyron Williams. There's nothing. There's zero threat. Like, I, 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 I'd be... If we're walking into a draft that had Gibbs and Bijan, you'd be like, okay, I well, wonder what's going to happen. And if he if he escapes it, then we have no worries. I have no worries. I'm not concerned a single bit. I don't care who they draft. These are third round running backs, really. You know, I'll be shocked if a couple running backs go around two at this point. The way that the NFL views this running back class, and even if they even if the Rams are the one, the one team or two teams that take a running back in round two. I, I, they're not good enough. Their Kyron is on a whole nother level. Yeah, and, and like you said, the people that don't want to adapt, I mean, they, they're just gonna miss out because, um, like people, I, I could even see people argue, oh, he's you know a little bit undersized, which he's not that small. I think mean, he's like five nine, hundred ninety five, two hundred pounds or whatever, but. Um, he already showed in the red zone he can take the, the pounding in the red zone and the hits, but he's also a really good receiving option. So, you know, there, there's just so many different ways he can score that he's not going to lose that job either. And he's really become, you know, a nice security blanket for staff at Joe. Yeah. Let me see if I can plug my my uh, iPad in and, and draft with you guys. Hold on. I'm trying to see if it if it'll if it'll work. Hold on one second, because I want to draft here. Let, let's go over to Rock Out. Rock Out, you're live. What's up, pal? What's up, Rock Out? Yeah, I think I think Kyrie, I think uh, Ky, uh, Kyron will have a good year. I think once um, uh, McVay likes the guy, he sticks with him. He can he can catch, he can run, and you could see probably some. Some kind of talk the girly effect uh, this year with uh, Kyrie. Yeah, I think McVeigh is going to be like the the whole thing about McVeigh wants to bring someone in. Someone show so, someone show me the evidence that, that's making you feel that way. <laughs> what, what what exactly is it? Because oh, Kyron wasn't a super high draft cap. I don't care about any of that. McVeigh doesn't care about any of that. What, what McVeigh cares about is production. And this guy, Kyron yeah. Williams, came out and scored 15 touchdowns on 12 games. If anybody thinks that Kyron Williams didn't prove himself to McVeigh with that production, they're out of their mind. Or they're just so hell-bent on digging their heels in because they didn't see it coming. They don't want to be a part of it. They want the, they want the ride to crash so they can feel right about last year missing it. Um, I don't know why this is not showing up. Let me see if I can. Just don't miss the ride twice. You have a second chance to get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. That's right. The the ride's closing, and this is your last chance to get on board. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to draft tonight. Dang it. Um, what I can do is send a, a private draft link. So here's what I'll do. Uh, I'm going to go into the the drafts right now. I'm going to go into NFL and I'm going to create a draft and I'm going to post the link and it's going to be a private league draft between the the me and the 12 people that, that, that jump in. So let me go ahead and do that real quickly. Hang tight, guys. Let me go NFL. Um, we'll do a 12-person slow draft. These are three dollar entries. Just know that the three dollar entries, the prizes aren't going to be huge because it's just you know it's three bucks. But 
um, and I don't control how, like they, those, how they divide it up. But you do enough of these, and it ends up being really fun because at the end of the year, you end up having uh, a boatload of... Uh, there we go. Click that link right there. That link will get you I want, into I the... I want to get them out of those last year. Yeah, I did. I had a ton of... I mean, like, it's a $3 draft. The prizes are, like, 20-something dollars or $18, whatever. But, yeah, you do a ton of them, and you get, like, 17 out of, let's say, 30 of them to win. It's, like, adds up. You're like, damn. Okay, so I dropped that. It looks like seven more to start. We already have people just filling that sucker up. Okay, great. I'm sorry we can't do a live draft on the thing. I got to restart my computer. It won't let me. But, guys, look at the, look at these numbers. I mean... On pace for 16 20, 21 TDs total. And it was he wasn't even like super involved in the passing game to a degree. This is his pace number right here. His actual stats are are right here. That's if if we pace it out. These are his actual 2023 stats. He had 1144, 12 TDs, three receiving. That's 15 total. 32 receptions for 206. So pacing him out 17 games doesn't extend his receiving numbers out too much. Gives him some more, uh, another touchdown, but this puts him at 21 total touchdowns. That's crazy. That's crazy. And and, and, and and again, 12 games, 12 rushing touchdowns. Not 12 games, 12 total touchdowns. He played 12 games and scored 12 rushing touchdowns and still had three. I'm telling you, there's no running back I trust more. I, you could say McCaffrey, but he's 28 years old. The, the odds of some sort of injury are, are high. Not not a lock, but they're high. There's no running back I trust more to get me 100 yards total in a touchdown on any given Sunday, Monday, Thursday, occasional Saturday, than Kyron Williams. None. Not one. Even, even Bijan. Uh, yeah, Bijan is different because Bijan is going to come with a whole bunch more receiving PPR production. So, like, there'll be a different phrase that I'll have when we do the Bijan one. There's nobody that I trust more to maybe get 100 total yards, you know, than Bijan. Like, I think he'll get, but to get 100 total yards in a, a score, that's this guy. Bijan's going to get, I mean, he might have the most receiving touchdowns out of all running backs in the National Football League next year. He might have the most receptions out of every running back in the National Football League next year. Bijan's PPR numbers are going to be through the roof. Brees Hall, he's going to be unbelievable. His targets are were amazing. I, I the only reason I have him, and I don't have him like like really even, but at two or three, him and Gibbs and him and Gibbs and CMC are really close. I don't know how I'm going to really rank it out at the end of the day. Right now, I'm still in like. I don't know, bouncing yeah. around mode. I, like, I'm just being honest. Mm -hmm. Some people have it locked in. I don't have anything locked in right now. Who could? Who could really, who can really lock in their top five running backs and keep it there? Yeah. Right like, every day it's different for me. But but I do I do know that my top five RBs are pretty much the same no matter what, and that's Bijan, Kyron, Hall, Gibbs, and CMC. Um... I have, a, I have a question. I know we're on the main page and kind of talking redraft, but in terms of dynasty value, um, I hope the Rams do, even if it's a you know third or fourth round guy, take a quarterback because that's the one one area I'm a little you know like hesitant in is dynasty long term because of Stafford. If Stafford goes down and they have nobody, that could hurt his value long term couldn't it do you agree or uh i mean it certainly doesn't help when any, anybody loses a quarterback but you know may, maybe they end up doing something crafty um stafford well, plays that's what i'm hoping yeah for. If stafford plays two more years they'll, they'll maybe figure that out by then i really wish they go draft or trade for justin fields i think that would be an unbelievable that'd be awesome preemptive move and you could use him as like a, a wide back whatever you had to do you know to keep him happy involved and, and make sure stafford didn't feel pressure but you you gotta go get fields you gotta go get fields i don't know why these people don't go get fields uh barkley certainly right up there jeff again how do you how do you even how do you even rank these guys you know, you can't. You, you, it's not something you can lock in. If anybody has their top six, seven running backs locked in, and they're going to take it all the way to August, they're out of their mind. They're out of their mind because 
I run into a problem every time I do my rankings. Every time I do my top five running back rankings, I run into a problem. That problem is I don't know, I don't know what I'm really feeling is gonna. I don't. I, they're all so close. They're so close. This is the one year where it's like Brees Hall is easily running back one capable. Bijan's clearly running back one capable. Kyron, hundred thousand percent running back one capable. Christian McCaffrey, of course he is. Barkley. I don't think I think he could be running back one cable, but he's a guy that's gonna maybe take one of these guys out of the top five, and then Barkley's in a four, five, or six running back overall territory. Uh, the only reason I would say that he doesn't feel as locked in is his PPR production is not guaranteed. Um, I think they do kill more, and I think the Eagles do throw to him more than they threw to Swift. But there's still a whole lot of reason why in history behind why we we know that he's not going to be the league's leading receiving running back. So Barkley kind of doesn't have that PPR protect, protection baked in. And you could say Kyron doesn't really either, though, Smitty. But the guy had 15 touchdowns on 12 games. His touchdown production is higher than anybody's. This guy, is, this guy lives in the end zone. This guy's hungry. I'm going to have it on my Instagram later. Make sure you're following me on IG. Uh, this footage of him pulling sleds and working out, he's, he's on a freaking mission this offseason. He's not going to rest until he's the number one overall running back. He's not. This guy's a freaking phenom. It's unbelievable. All right, draft started. I just took my pick. All right. Uh, I wish I could. Let me see if I can try and get it to, to show the draft, but I don't think it's going to. Let's see if I can pull it up again. Let's see here. Let's see here. I think I just need to restart my. Come on. Come on. No, it's not. It's not showing it. Unless you guys see it and I don't, but. What do I think about Derrick Henry? I, I mean, I love Derrick Henry in, in his situation, but I don't, he's not running back one capable to me at, at all. Just because he's he's falling off. Um, he's not going upward. He's going downward. But the, the thing is, will he have Gus Bus, you know, multiple two and three TD games? Like, Henry could maybe score second or third in the NFL in rushing touchdowns. Like, that's capable of happening. I just don't know that he's going to. Smitty, can HM be a top five running back? Uh, certainly could. I, I think we, you know, where we want to value him is where we're like mid to back half running back one and, and preferably back half. And then, you, and then you, you try and, you know, hope for more, but that's where you draft him. Okay. So I'm on the clock right now at pick 1.6 yep. and the draft went, as follows i don't maybe i can i can show let me show here i don't know if you guys can see if it'll if it'll if it'll zoom it'll probably be blurry but it went christian mccaffrey hold on it went christian mccaffrey b john robinson cd lamb jamar chase tyreek hill see jj is falling yeah, <laughs> I mean JJ is falling. So when Christian McCaffrey, Bijan, CD Lamb, Jamar Chase, Tyreek Hill. Now I could take Hall. I could take Gibbs. I could take you know those those boys. But at, at this point, I'm going to go JJ. I think this is value. This is packaging the risk that we're worried about. I'm not concerned about JJ at, at seven six. But I, I do agree that at one, two, and three, it's hard to take them right now without knowing. And even if they draft JJ McCarthy, I'm not like it helps me a little bit feel comfortable with his landing spot. But I'm certainly not like in the business of JJ's the number one overall player right now with JJ McCarthy. I know he can survive a lot. He he's quarterback proof to a degree, but he's not going to be getting you the highest potential at every category. He might be in yardage. But then lacks in touchdowns. He might be in receptions and somewhat in yardage and lacks in touchdowns. 
I, I just don't. There's no. There's no way JJ can be number one overall to me, and that's what he's capable of being. Like if he had Kirk, Kirk Cousins back, we'd see him going two or three, maybe one. Yeah. If if, uh, if Fields gets traded to Minnesota, I bet you he, he climbs to three. I bet you JJ climbs back up to three. He might not climb all the way to one or two because people worry about Fields. Some people call Fields Fields a bust, but he definitely climbed to 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 three if he had Justin Fields. JJ McCarthy, I bet he climbs to five, not six. I bet he climbs one spot getting an, a, a rookie quarterback like that. He gets Penix Jr. So many people are, are are scared of Penix Jr. I wouldn't be surprised if he stayed around five. Five or six overall. And I like that. That's building in the, the value all day. If you guys want to draft with us, Code Smitty. Links in the description. Links in the, the live chat pinned. Code Smitty will double your first deposit. The link will double your first deposit up to $100. So, do you know how they were talking about Vikings possibly trading, um, trading up with those picks. Um, I was just looking at the order again, and they talk about like the Patriots or someone like that trading back. Like literally, the only way you do that is if you're just going for volume of players, because there's a good chance even by 11, you're missing out on the top uh, top quarterbacks, the top receivers, and possibly the top linemen. So you're getting like the next tier of guys. Possibly. Sounds, sounds very Arizona Cardinal like. You yeah, know, possibly I, Patriots like. Yeah, Patriots and the Cardinals are the two, and they're at three and four. They're the two most likely teams to be like. We want to get more picks. You know, we just want to get good players, quality players. Whereas Travis and I and everybody probably watching, minus one or two or three of you, you conservative Caleb's, and that's fine. We love you too. You know, you're you do you. Don't change. Nobody's asking you to change. But I think the majority of us would say Marvin Harrison Jr. is worth so much more than freaking depth. You know, JD well, five or Drake even Drake May worth so much more than depth. And and correct, Brian, Drake May's way better than JJ McCarthy for JJ. Like we, we don't want Justin Jefferson catching footballs well, from a Justin or a J.J. McCarthy or lesser quarterback. And Sam Darnold is not even on the same level as J.J. McCarthy. And J.J. McCarthy doesn't excite me. I, I think he's okay, the, like, but he's not hes not a gunslinger. The perfect example is like, you know, if, if you have a top three or five pick, you have a chance at truly elite guys. And like the perfect example, if, if you're down in the 20s or the teens, there's a chance you're getting good guys, not great guys. And like the perfect example of that is like Hollywood Brown. He was taken in the twenties and he's good, but look how often those guys move around teams. You can always get good players. Hollywood Brown's going on is what, fourth and fifth team because he's just good. He's not great. Thomas appreciate you. You know, so it's like if you have a chance to take that elite guy, I, I just if I'm gonna get three good guys or one elite guy, give me the elite guy all day. Mm-hmm. Uh, BK says he looks like I'm taking the I'm taking the man of the the hour, so it looks like BK took uh, took Kyron. Look, I'm telling you guys, um, you're drafting with a bunch of sharks right now. We're all in the same we all have the same taste, you know, right now. So you're, you're we're sniping the hell out of each other. But in a normal draft, if you if you guys want to go try and dominate with Kyron at 12, 13 turn. You get the, the 11 pick, you're going to get Kyron. You get the 12 pick, you're going to get Kyron. You get the 9 pick, you're going to get Kyron. The 10 pick, the 11. Um, I urge you all to get on over to the link that's pinned in the live chat. The link that's in the description of the video. Um, that link inserts code Smitty, or you can just download the Underdog app. Use code Smitty when it asks you how you heard about it. And that will double your first deposit up to $100. And uh, you can also dominate drafting Kyron at... 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 overall. Gibbs and Kyron is the funnest way to draft at 12, 13, or 11, and 14. I, I, I All my teams I have with Kyron and Gibbs, or I, some some cases I've gotten, you know, something crazier. Like, uh, I think one time I got, I think I got Hall and Kyron once at 12, 13. Because it was a very wide receiver, eager beaver group. They would describe a wide receiver, wide receiver the whole time. And I'm like, you know what? 
I'll come back and get Cooper Cup with Devontae Smith, and I'll be fine. And that's been my go-to when I when I go running back, running back on underdog. I, I am finding myself going Devontae Smith and Cooper Cup a lot. Uh, yeah, I don't like having the number one pick when I when I draft when we all draft together because everyone just slides off the board. Yeah, it's hard to get. Yeah. I, yeah. Uh, if <laughs> it helps Vikings if Bears pass on Caleb and take MHJ. Uh, it could it could it could definitely help, or you could say that. Fields is available, and the Vikings are just choosing not to go down that road, which is the most helpful road. Why is it the most helpful road? Because you can then use the 11 pick on defense or you know, whatever. You know, the the the, the Vik- <laughs> it, the thing the thing that irks me the most about the Vikings thinking is you trade for Justin Fields, you have Addison, JJ, and Hawkinson, you have Aaron Jones. You have fields at this point. You have not used the 11 pick. You've not used the 23 pick. The Vikings could bolster a piece of the offense or two defensive pieces and literally compete. Literally compete right now and build for the future at the same time with Fields, JJ, Aaron Jones, Addison, Hawkinson, and two monster defensive pieces or O-line, whatever you want to do. But no, the Vikings... You know, maybe they prove me wrong and do this, but they they're going to show that they don't know what in the hell they're doing. I mean, can you imagine having the eleven and twenty three pick to do whatever you want with? It's not even offensive related, like big name. You know, God. Maybe that's what they're gonna. Maybe they trade for Fields, and I'm like, I'm I'm just sitting here. Cla- if the Vikings, whatever team trades for Fields. I'm going to start the show off with a two or three minute standing ovation. And we're just going to sit here and cheer for two or three minutes. Because whatever team took the, 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 has the courage and has the, the nads and they put them on the table and they say, you know what? We're going to take the risk at second, third round value. They deserve our mashed potato two to three minute standing ovation. It, it's like, it's. How is he not worth starting for some of these teams? If you call him a bust, fine. But he's better than these options. The chance of him not busting is better than these options that a lot of these teams are going to be dealing with. Is I, I like Howell and Geno. I'm not saying I don't like them, but they're not winning you a, 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 a couple playoff no. games. They're not. No. Not with the competitive conferences. No. you know. So any of these teams that have the Howells, and, it's not going to happen. You might play all right. You well, might sell some tickets. You might, you know, you might evolve JSN a little bit with Gino and how <laughs> you're not winning multiple playoff games. You'll be lucky. You'll be thanking your lucky stars if you make the playoffs with Gino and how. Playoffs with Gino. If you're in the middle, you're going nowhere, you know, in the NFL. Yeah. They like having parity and teams. You're not first or last. You know, they're going to sneak into the wild card. And Ricky they, Bobby. How many teams? How many teams sneaking into the wild card really have any future? You know. I mean, Ricky Bobby's dad they change was, every year. Ricky Bobby's dad was he yep. hit the nail on the head. If you're not first, you're last. What are you gonna do? Yep. What are you gonna do with Geno and Howell? And I don't even care that you have them already. You still make the move. Oh, we got Geno and Howell. Who cares? <laughs> you know, or we got O'Connell and Minshew. Who cares? Who cares? Mm-hmm. They'll need somebody. It's just stupidity. It really is. If anybody wants to call in and argue against it, please do. Phone line's open. Phone line's wide open. Yeah, yeah take as many swings as you can. Um, Fields over Russ, I 100% agree. And I, li- and I think Russ isn't bad. You know, Ru- Russ isn't bad. The problem is Russ is paired with Arthur Smith. So what a what a, what a a kick to the sack. That for for Russell Wilson. Oh, but I like Arthur. Greg, good for you. We don't. Next. Uh, imagine Hal wins the Super Bowl. I, I, look, I like Hal. He ain't winning multiple playoff games. That's all. That's all I'm gonna say. I, I like him. He got some work ahead. 
I like him, though. I, I, I do like him. He's like one of the better backups in the National Football League. Let's take a second to laugh at the Cowboys, says Aurora. Well, so what Aurora is probably hinting at is that they just sat on their hands. Uh, Jerry Jones must have taken a nap during the first two days of free agency, woke up and said, oh, crap, I forgot to set my alarm because they just didn't do anything. The, the Dallas Cowboys, there's a report, and I was going to actually go live on this. I probably still could tomorrow because it's still kind of not out there all that much, but I believe it deserves to be talked about. But there's a report that Jerry Jones or Derrick Henry was asked on a, on, a, on a radio show interview, did the Dallas Cowboys even contact you? And he said no. He said no. That's negligent. Like they didn't even kick the tires. They didn't even say, "Hey, can we, can we just talk to you for a?" Like, th- it's unbelievable. Must be dead set on drafting someone. It's unbelievable that you you wouldn't negligence is the the right word, and it might not even be strong enough. So the Dallas Cowboys, like as much as they've got a good team, I look at the Cowboys like the Niners in a way. Their team is already so good that they don't necessarily need to do the same things that other teams need to do. They don't need to necessarily make the same splashes. But the Dallas Cowboys are one position short of that, and that is the RB position. So, like, they don't necessarily need to make any crazy big splashes. That I mean, it would have been nice. Honestly, if I was a decision maker and I made all the decisions in Dallas, I would have brought in Henry or Barkley, probably Barkley. And maybe Barkley didn't want to go there, but they didn't even they didn't even reach out to Henry, so we don't even know. Henry didn't even say like, "No, I didn't want to go." He was like, "No, they didn't reach out." Um, I would have brought in Henry or Barkley or Jacobs. Jacobs would have been fantastic in Dallas too. Uh, probably yeah. Jacobs actually. I, brought, I would have brought in Barkley, Jacobs, mm-hmm. then Henry in that order. If I'm thinking long term, I do like Henry in Dallas a lot. So any any way you spin that, I'd be fine. And then I would have brought in Hollywood Brown. Hollywood Brown was the most crafty wide yep. receiver addition, and he was the last one to go. And the Chiefs, I knew it was going to happen. I said it about, I think, 24 hours before it happened. He's going to the Chiefs because mm-hmm. it just it just makes sense. They need a wide receiver. They were kind of you know making making open up a cap space to make a move at that right time when the receiver, receivers were dwindling down. Ridley, Hollywood Brown. And, and it just it made sense. They needed a wide receiver. Everybody knew it. It was the worst-kept secret of the league. But they waited till the last second, but then they pulled it off. But good God, I, I would have brought in... I would have. I mean, I would have brought in Eckler if need be. Like, I get he's not the type of running back you wanted, but, like, why would you not bring in somebody? Yeah. And you can draft an RB. Yeah. I get it. Like, Braylon Allen will be great in Dallas. I think we could we could come back and, and, and pretty much delete are thinking here and reset it and go, you know what? Dallas. Yeah. Dallas is going to be okay. They drafted Braylon Allen or Dallas is going to be okay. They, they had their eyes set on Jalen, Wright. They wanted them bad. And let's say they reach at 28. I think they have 28 pick, right? Let's say they reach. No, they have the 20. No, they can't do that. 24. Let's say they move up in the second round. They move up to the top of the second round. They take Braylon Allen or Jalen, Wright. I'm coming back, not to eat my words, but coming back to say, you know what? This worked out great. At the end of the day, this worked out. We don't know that it can work out that way. So they did still crap the bed as of this moment. It's not like, a, oh, I made a mistake in, in being critical of them. No, we could be critical of them. They didn't do anything. Like, they should have done a lot more. So I, I agree. I, I don't say I'll, I'll laugh at them. But good God, why, why you wouldn't bring in or even call Derrick Henry is a travesty. Thank you, Aurora. Brandon Cook shouldn't be your number two wide receiver. He should be your number three. With a team like that that's looking to win a Super Bowl. Uh, the Bolts is the and Cal- after all that, they just they just said they were cutting Gallup, too, which is fine, but not, you know, they need another wide receiver now. Uh, that, uh, the Bolts says Cowboys do draft well. They do. They do. They also don't apparently want mm-hmm. to spend money. I, but we'll see what they do. If they take Braylon Allen or Jalen Wright, or even Blake Corum, I, I guess. I, I'm not as big on him as everybody else, but I, I do like him. He's got grit. He's got a great attitude. Um, it's more about size, but but I like his tenacity. I, yeah. I, re- I really like Corum in, in LAC. If he goes with Harbaugh, if he gets linked back up with Harbaugh, Harbaugh's yeah. going to feed him, and it'll be a good fit. He'll be really good. He's situationally good. You're, 
and Gus isn't Gus doesn't you know Gus is solid, but he doesn't provide like a huge roadblock to him. Yeah. You're I, up, Smitty, in the draft. I don't know why they Gus boss. I don't like that. Okay, so yeah, well, in the draft, um, I don't think this will be visible, but it went uh, Christian McCaffrey. Can I? Can I? Mm. Let's see if I can get it to to focus. Maybe I can zoom in. Uh, my phone just won't connect. Christian McCaffrey, it went uh, number one. Bijan, two. C.D. Lamb, three. Uh, Jamar Chase, four. Tyreek, five. J.J. to me at six. Brees Hall, Kyron Williams. You guys want to draft like this? Uh, uh, links pinned in the live chat. Links in the description. Underdog Fantasy. Or just put code Smitty in when you download the app. Kyron at eight. Amon Ra, nine. Jameer Gibbs, Puka Nakua, A.J. Brown, and Barkley at the bookends. And then uh, it went Garrett Wilson, Jonathan Taylor, Nico, Devon Chan, and uh, DJ Moore. So I'm on the clock. I've got JJ already. Marvin Harrison Jr. is there. Devontae Adams is there. Boatload of wide receivers are available. Um, running backs are very, very thinned out. Um, although there's still some good options. Um, man, I, I guess... Uh, <laughs> You guys like Jacobs here? Yeah. I like I Jacobs agree. a lot this year. Yeah, I think as a second round yeah. pick, I'm fine with it. I don't care if the ADP is a little off. JJ and Jacobs, I'll take that. I, now, uh, I thought you might go JJ and Marvin. Yeah, I thought about it, but uh, there's a lot of wide receivers. I really, I really wanted yeah. to, I really wanted to smash the the balanced approach. Well, boys, uh, I'm probably gonna I'm probably gonna jump here. Um, we'll finish this draft offline because it's a slow draft. Anybody else wants to draft again? Yeah, under, underdog fantasy codes in the in the live chat pinned. The link description also has it, and then code Smitty gets you a double your first deposit. Uh, rock out. Any final thoughts, bro? Uh, not not really. Uh, appreciate it. Appreciate you, bro. Rock out to the moon. Don't, don't, don't we have your intro in here somewhere? Let's see. I think I got uh, it. Somewhere. I think I got it here. That is Rock Out, ladies and gentlemen. This is Rock Out, and he's in the building. I'm going to spit that fire. fire. I'm going to preach it to your fire. And the Rock Out going to get it on now. All right, Rock Out. We'll see you later, bro. Cool. <laughs> Made his own intro song. Um, Travis, any final thoughts? Um, no, I was just gonna say that's I don't know, someone may have mentioned it in the past couple of days, but um, it's funny that you know, no one saw Jacobs going to the Packers, but they were trying to trade for JT last trading deadline, so you know, maybe we should have anticipated they might have taken a run at one of these running backs. I don't know. Yeah, but I had forgotten that they they were trying for JT at the trade deadline, which was surprising too. But um, yeah, uh, rock out! You're up next, just so you know. I don't know if M Smith is still around. It's him, rock out, and then me. So let's see what happens. Uh, M's, yeah. <clears throat> All right, sweetie. All right, bro. It. All right, appreciate you, Kyron, to Talk the move. Later. For anybody yep. doesn't know about Kyron Williams. Let me tell you a little story. He's Kyron. He's seven feet tall. And he knows how to handle a ball. He's Kyron. He can take frowns and turn them upside down with his touchdowns. I mean, the the other thing I don't think you guys realize, I don't think anybody realizes this but me. Um, you tell me another content creator that that uh, that 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 understands what what he's dealing with here. But look at Kyron Williams; he has a lightning bolt on his nose. I mean, do, does anybody understand the kind of dedication this man has? He's lightning fast. He's seven feet tall. Look at the scar on his nose; it's a lightning bolt. It's a, it's a lightning bolt. The man has a lightning bolt scar on the bridge of his nose, and 
some of you out there are doubting him. Some of you out there don't think he's capable of 20-plus touchdowns. I don't know about you, but I trust a man with a lightning bolt on his nose more than I trust a man without a lightning bolt on his nose. Kyron was on pace, as I tried to explain to all of you earlier, on 17 games, even though he played 12, if you extrapolate it out, 16, 20, 21 total touchdowns, running back two overall, he would have scored 357 fantasy points and was only behind Christian McCaffrey, and both of them would have been above everybody else. Kyron Williams scored 12 TDs on 12 games on the ground alone. He scored 15 total touchdowns in 12 games. This man averages 1.0 touchdowns on the ground rushing per game and 15 touchdowns on 12 games he would have scored 21 on the year had he played 17 games there's no running back in the national football league i trust more in 2024 to have 100 yards total and a touchdown in every single game there's no one i trust more than kyra williams for that for that job appreciate you all i'll see you all tomorrow and for those that don't know, Kyron is seven feet tall. They measured him. He's seven feet tall. He knows how to handle the ball. He's Kyron. He's seven feet tall. And he knows how to handle the ball. He's Kyron. He can take frowns and turn them upside down with his touchdowns. Alec with the two dollar hauler. Appreciate appreciate you. Any changes to the Moon Men with the free agency news? Um, yeah, it's a good question. Uh, we we no longer have um... the Moon Men dropping loads in outer space. I don't know. If we've done an official announcement video on it, but Zamir White popped on the Moon Man list to replace Space Monsters to replace um. What's his face? We're already forgetting his name. <laughs> We're, I'm already forgetting his name. A, I'm zonked out. But B, uh, you know, once Pollard replaced him, uh, you basically were like, okay, you can't have you on the on the list anymore. <laughs> Poor guy. Uh, but, yeah, Zamir's popped on. And, uh, you know, he'll probably remain there. And if anything happens, we'll definitely... Uh, I'll definitely let you know. You know, Zamir, if the Raiders draft a RB, then uh, you know we'll have to make a we'll have to make a move there. But but there's very few people that pop onto the list and then pop off it. But we do have to kind of ensure we um, we we don't uh, you know pull people on and off on and off and make this list like meaningless in the early offseason. It has to mean something. So Zeus is on the list. You know, Spears is off. Zeus is on. Pollard kind of put put a damper on on uh, on Tajay Spears' value. It just doesn't make sense anymore to have him on the Moon Man list. I do like him, and his his value got kicked right in the sack, so he drops even further, which kind of in a way makes him a sleeper. But definitely don't uh, definitely don't love Tajay Spears right now, especially given he's got one ACL, the other knee doesn't have one. He's not even the starter. Um, kind of kind of lost some value. But, you know, he's still got sleeper rising, sleeping giant value, though, because if Pollard goes out there and gets injured, then boom, you know, he's back in the in the good graces. So we'll, uh, the pull-up bar is good. I need to get on my muscle up. I'm going to do that on my World of Smitty YouTube channel. For those that don't follow me over there, please go follow me on, on my other YouTube channel. Um, it'll be my vlog channel. I'm going to do the road to a muscle up on that channel, and it'll be a, a fun little thing to follow along on. I also have my... A vehicle that I um, upgraded, you know, piece by piece. Here's the World of Smitty YouTube channel. Please click that. Subscribe. I'll be doing a, a challenge, a muscle up challenge on that channel. So uh appreciate you all. Yeah, I, I'm I'm still high in Spears too. It's just we can't have him on the movement. I mean we could, but I'd rather use that spot for another player. Um Spears will definitely be like a, well, maybe we'll have a sleeping giant list of guys that like are literally garbage valuable. We just you know they get they get awoken. They could be monsters. Zeus, Zeus, you know, Zeus was that guy. Now look at Zeus, Zamir White, and and Spears kind of returns back to that sleeping giant dormant value. I'll see you all later. We'll be live tomorrow at some point.
Thank you all for the super chats. Thank you, Alec. Thank you for the $2 hauler. Good question. Thank you, Aurora. Thank you, Space Ricky. I will see you all later.